Hey, welcome back to Reselect. This is Dave Gershman, as always, welcoming you to another episode of our podcast all about music. Um, These days we're doing uh, mostly music album episodes, and it's been a little while since the last one, I realize, but it's been a crazy, crazy summer, crazy couple months for me in particular, difficult to schedule with the other two, Eric and Sarah. We haven't been able to record too frequently, and I don't like to feed these out uh, much faster than we can record them, so we've always got a few stockpiled. I will try to get them done a little quicker this uh, over the next few, at least. Anyway, as, I, as I'm as i talking now, it's extremely smoky outside here in the greater Seattle area. We've got all the smoke from the California forest fires, uh, which are tragically burning millions of acres. Not to mention, we also have another couple million up this way in the Northwest, Oregon and Washington. So basically, it's it's all combining into this very bad air quality. Uh, last time I looked, it was something like 250 on the air quality index, which is dangerous or very unhealthy, depending on which, which one you're looking at. Uh, last night, I checked, it was 316, which is hazardous. So basically, you're not supposed to be outside breathing because... If you do for very long, uh, you'll get particles in your lungs and all sorts of bad things will happen. Nonetheless, I did see a family riding by on bicycles today. Uh, I did not understand what that was all about because they didn't have masks on. Uh, The dad was smiling on his bike in the back and the kids were having a good time and they're all killing themselves because they're potentially breathing more heavily than they usually would. So I just, I don't know what they were thinking. So anyway, I would also just like to, uh, well, I'd like to mention the (laughs) subject of this podcast episode, which is the new pornographers and their album twin cinema. It came out in, Oh, what year did it come out? 2003, 2005, 2000 something, but (laughs) you'll, you'll hear in the episode and you can look it up. I, I'm not, I'm not connected to the internet at the moment. Anyway, we're talking about the New Pornographers Twin Cinema album. A fantastic album, if you ask me. Not so much if you ask somebody else in this episode, who will go unnamed at the moment, although you will figure it out pretty quickly. I've been a big fan of the New Pornographers for a very long time, more or less since they first hit the scene. Uh, I was already a Nico Case fan at that point, so I guess it was a natural uh, transition into into their music, but I also uh, I also like Zampano, which is Carl Newman's previous band, and Carl is the primary songwriter for the New Pornographers. During this episode, you'll hear us refer to the uh, concert that we were going to be going to see of New New Pornographers. Uh, not long after the recording of this, as it turned out. And I can tell you now because, you know, it's not really a spoiler. Eric was not feeling well uh, before the concert and was unable to attend. Sarah did go, however. Uh, the concert was very good, I thought, although, uh, th- to be honest, the sound mix was not great. Really didn't It really didn't uh, help Nico's voice stand out. It sounded a bit cluttered and it, it really could have benefited from a, a cleaner cleaner mix but they are a great group anyway uh great musicians songwriters etc why don't we just get on into the episode you can take a listen see what you think if you're a fan i'm sure you'll still be if you're not a fan i suppose you have some uh you'll have some differences of opinion to consider uh we do play some of their music so you can form your own Oh, one thing I did want to say was that uh, it occurred to me as I was saying the new pornographers recently (laughs) that it's the kind of name that you really, uh, it's easy to get used to, the fact that you like a band called the new pornographers, but if somebody hasn't heard it, it can be a somewhat, I don't know, salacious uh, band name or maybe a little surprising. Yes, and it's a surprising band name if you're not used to it, and uh, most people who are not familiar with the band would be somewhat taken aback to hear that you like the new pornographers. Anyway, um, let's get on to the episode and you can uh, take a listen, see what you think, and hopefully enjoy. And we'll be back 
in hopefully not too long. Thanks very much. Enjoy. So we're talking about uh, Hunter. Can you? <laughs> he was Hunter, he was like no. playing with his bowl over there. Yeah, it's a it's a whole thing. Does he need feeding or no? no. Oh, okay, he just has to interact with it. Okay. Hey, just eat it. <laughs> what? I'm busy over here. Yeah, just doing stuff. <laughs> so he takes it out of the bowl, eats it off the floor, puts it on the floor, eats it off the floor. Yeah. He usually has to bark at it like once yeah. or twice. Okay. I go downstairs, I'm like, what's happening? Oh, I'm just yelling at your food. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should try that with our pizza. Yeah. Hey! Hey! hey. <laughs> I do that. I Be do pizza. That. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to your pizza. Talk to your food. Yeah, um, right. So we're talking, we're talking about uh, Twin Cinema, the uh, 2005 album from the New Pornographers. It was their third full-length album. I selected this album because I am a big fan of the New Pornographers, and uh, I, I'm not as I haven't followed their later releases as closely as the early stuff. But the first three albums of theirs, I just love, and and this one, to me, felt like the one that uh, maybe I hadn't quite given as much time to as the first two, so I really wanted to delve a little more into into it. And uh, being a big fan of Nico Case and Carl Newman on their solo stuff as well. Uh, well, we we covered Nico Case in an earlier episode, so I thought you guys might also want to hear. She's amazing. Her, 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 her in this context. Indeed. Not to mention that we are going to see them in just a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm dying you to excited? see this show. Yeah. I'm very excited really? about yeah. the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this should be interesting. So, <laughs> uh, so I, uh, New Pornographers is basically, some people call it a super group, but that's not really accurate. It's uh, it's made up of people who are in other bands, but um, like Nico Case has her own thing mm-hmm. going on, and she did. She would released a couple of albums before the first new new pornographers album came out. Um, Dan Behar, who does like two or three songs in every new pornographers album, uh, he's in a band called Destroyer, and, and Carl Newman has been in a band called Zampano. And he's got a couple of solo albums, but actually he didn't do his solo stuff till after the first couple of new pornographer albums. Mm. So really he's well known mostly from new pornographers, which doesn't exactly make it a super group situation because usually that's like people already famous for other things come together. But, mm-hmm. but what it is, it's like a collective in a sense of songwriters and performers who, uh, Carl Newman is basically the ringleader. He writes all the songs. No, sorry. Take it back. Dan Behar does his own songs. They're mostly Carl Newman stuff. And uh, Nico is there as a collaborator, but not as a songwriter. And apparently as a backup vocalist, because that's and, the smartest thing to do with Nico Case is to <laughs> like bury her voice in the mix and put her behind Carl Newman's voice. <laughs> Super smart. <laughs> Did I sense a ton of sarcasm in your voice there? I'm not I just sure. I get over that. You have Nico Case you, next to you, and he's like, you made no, this honey, point. No, let me no. sing over you. See, you're completely let's, misrepresenting let's the situation. <laughs> okay. This is his band. This is his band, and she so is a what, willing collaborator. Smart enough. If you've got a Stradivarius yeah. in the studio, she's got a solo career. St- just be like, just pluck that violin. Keep the bow far <laughs> away from it. Just pluck it quietly in the corner. That's the way to use. She the has a solo career, and that's where she gets to do all her stuff. Oh. This is his band, and he wants to sing songs, and he loves her voice and uh, wants to have her become part of it and enhance it. And, in fact, I heard an, um, an interview that he did with uh, Rhett Miller of mm-hmm. the Old 97s, who has mm-hmm. his own podcast, mm-hmm. and he was talking to Carl Newman, and uh, Carl said that whenever he writes a song and then gives it to Nico she takes it to like this other level that he never even envisioned for it. Like it just, it becomes this whole different thing. And, and she adds a, this gravitas, I think is the word he used, but like, she just makes it seem so much more important than, than he yeah, ever. Imagine what she could do if he <laughs> let her sing lead. Right. But then it wouldn't be his band anymore. It would be. So what? It, 
See, it's you're, still his band. That's not um, a valid complaint, I don't think, because it's, it's a totally valid you're, complaint. No, no. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just I'm approaching this from much more from like they are a, a collaboration. They're not, and, and it's not to like he's not doing this to like show us how amazing Nico is. I mean, he can't help but do that. And I think sure he could give every song to her, but then it wouldn't really probably like as a creative output for him or out out outlet. Uh, it probably wouldn't do what it what he wants it to do. I mean, he's he's writing songs and he wants to sing them too. I mean, you know, so thinking she should sing every one of them is, I don't know. She's got her solo career. That's all I'm saying. That's well, it. it's just a weird thing to me. Like, if you're a musician and you're in a studio and you're making a song, and like her voice is just better than his. I don't mean that like the whole band should be a setup for her, but it seems to me that like if you're trying to make good music. And your voice isn't clearly isn't as yeah, strong but, as hers. Like, but but then, he's, like I'm not saying she's a, gonna belt out every song, but it just it feels to me a little too much like those like, oh, your voice is too special. Just turn it down a little bit, like that people mm-hmm. say have said to women in recording studios. No, no, That's just well, no, because the way it sounds to me. Yeah, but you're looking at purely from a like, how does the song sound point? But what about what he's saying? I mean, he can't. <gasps> He can't have her sing. Sorry about that. Do you want to? Well, no, he's been outside. I don't know what he's doing. Hang on a second. I'm. Poor buddy. Good boy. Okay, I'm good so boy. sorry. It's okay. Okay. Are you good? You're. Yeah. Okay. Does that okay. Sound okay? Yeah. yeah. So, I think um, what you're saying is approaching it from a like, how does the song sound point of view? But his songs are have lyrics, and those lyrics aren't necessarily something that. A woman can sing, or well, they're from a man's Sorry. writing from a man's be, point of view. I mean, he's he's they're, they're his point of view. It's his his you know whatever. So I mean, mm-hmm. he he'd have to write for her all the time, or from a, a perspective that a woman could sing from. And, and some of the songs are universal, so it doesn't matter. But some of them aren't. You know, hmm. I didn't find a strong like gender bent to his music. Right. I mean, like there's a song where he refers to a contessa, which is female. That's not him. That's that's. Behar, oh, Behar Behar. singing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't. I didn't get a strong <clears throat> sense from his songs that they were very like specifically coming from a guy's perspective. Well, it, it's not even. Uh, yeah, I mean, I said guy's perspective, but I'm also just talking about him, like as a person, like like he's writing from his own experience, and I think some of those he probably feels the need to sing himself, you know, and and he probably finds the songs that are uh, would be well suited for her. Well, like you said, he she gives songs more or impact mm-hmm. in a way, and uh, and that may not really be what every song needs. You know, I mean, it's uh, every song has its own. You know, if they approach everyone the same way, it's all going to start sounding similar after a while. I don't know. It just sounds weird to me. Like when the, mm. all the songs, when her voice kicks in, it just seems unbalanced. Mm. I love his voice too. I mean, vocals. and that's the other thing. I I think he's he's yeah, got. I don't really like his voice that much. Yeah. It's it not a strong like Jeff Tweedy. Yeah, and he, he uh, but I, I, I think, I think the two of them together work fantastically well. I, I think it's a great combination, and mm. um, what she adds when she comes in with what are strictly backing vocals. I mean, I think it's just fantastic. Sometimes I think it's really gives us extra texture to it that even just her alone, it would be maybe not as satisfying somehow. But mm. I, I, th- I think they have a dynamic that works well together. But, mm. Well, Sarah, to your point, you know, <clears throat> Nico Case does have an amazing voice, and, and uh, her album I'm very fond of, and her songs that she participates in, and, and this album as well, mm-hmm. um, lovely voice, mm-hmm. uh, becoming one of my favorite singers. The, the way it strikes me is that, you know, she's a contributor to this album, and, you know, this this is somebody else's album, so she's a contributor, much like Tom Petty or Michael sure. Jackson or anybody else contributes to an album, it's they have they have their own careers as Nico does. Yeah. And so this is his opportunity. It's his turn. Yeah, well, and I, I don't think he necessarily sees it that way either. I mean, he's got his solo stuff for a reason. Like that's uh, where he, he also has solo stuff. He has solo like three solo albums that I think those are the things where he just has things that he doesn't think would be well suited for the group dynamic that they have. Um there are like eight people in the band or seven, seven or eight. And uh Yeah, there's a number of them. There's a lot it's a big group. And And they're older <clears> than I thought <throat> they'd be. <laughs> I saw some videos. Yeah, they're all in their yeah. 40s and 
Oh, anyway. really? You thought they were? I thought they were 30-somethings. Oh, a uh, couple of them. Totally might. some. When they first started, I think they were, but... Um, Perhaps, yeah. They've been around since, like, 99 or 2000, whatever. And, uh, but I think, I mean, I do, I think he does see this as not, it is his band in the fact, in the way that he writes the majority of the stuff. But I think as far as how they, the full song, final songs come together, it's definitely a, a group thing that they work on together to fill them out. So the, the Dan Behar songs are the ones that stand out to me as on some albums, I don't like the way they, they're kind of jarring. And on this album, I think. I think th- this album has my favorite contributions by him. Which uh, ones did he do? Well, they're the one. He's got this odd voice. This very like weird, nasally kind of voice that I. It's hard to describe, but I. I it bothers me. He did Jackie dressed in cobras. Mm. Um, oh yeah, broken beads, and streets of fire. Those are the Behar songs. And he, let's let's listen to Jackie dressed in cobras, which I really like, for especially for his. For his stuff, I think it's a it's a really good song. And, and I, I just I love their instrumentation too. Their the, mm-hmm. the guitars and the unique sounds they bring in there sometimes. Yeah, he's got this kind of slightly theatrical voice. And then Nico's in there. She comes in, and it really just it it, it fills out the the range of the harmonies really nicely. One of the things I liked about this song that stuck out to me in many of their songs, but this one is a great example of it, is how precise they are. Mm-hmm. You know, all those instruments come together and stop yeah. and start. And they all have their place. And they are super clean. Tight. And, yeah, and, and precise. It's really wonderful. Yeah, and I think both Dan Behar and Carl Newman write that way. I think they're yeah. both uh, do that. But I think also it's probably also the group, uh, the way that I, you know, I have no idea how they how they build the songs, but I think the way they come together, they all have very distinct parts that they, they do. And I think his enunciation, too, mm-hmm. tends to be mm-hmm. very crisp. Carl Newman's a little more... I don't want to say mealy mouth, but he's just he's a little more relaxed in his singing. So I mean my, that's ahead. my least favorite song on the record. Is it? Is that yeah. Right. Yeah, I hate that the name of the song, Jackie Dressed in Cobras. It, it refers back to uh something from the first New Pornographers album where he had a song, Behar had a song called Jackie. And uh-huh. I think it it references that. I don't know how exactly, but as I said, I'm not a huge fan typically of his contributions to the group. But this one, I, I something about the way the music all sounds, and it, it, I think it's sort of despite his voice, I like it because just the the music is just so, I don't know I, I find that the the propulsion of the song is really good, and just uh, it's got some great the piano touches and things like that. I li- I don't like the way that they're like the way that it's sung. It's more like <clears throat> spoken singing. It's well, like, that, ch- 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 and it just that, doesn't, that's him. That's that's yeah, what he does. I, I don't like the rhythm of that yeah, part. Um, yeah. I think the chorus is great. <clears throat> I like mm-hmm. the chorus a lot. I like the lyrics of it, and I like the sound of it. But overall, and the, this whole, like, the picture, Jackie dressed in cobras, it just it's, it feels like really, like, you're referencing, It's not, to me who doesn't know the earlier song, it sounds like you're referencing a couple of things and kind of cramming them together in a way that, like, nothing is really being enhanced by the combination instead of, like, like cobras are red and they should be in everything, and when they show up, they're, it's like a cool motif. But, I, like... I think what the song is actually about is like he's she's on the dance floor and she's surrounded mm-hmm. by guys who are like trying to like pick her up. Mm-hmm. They're there the cobra is ready to strike. And and the whole song is kind of about him observing this and uh he may be attracted to her but he all he can see is that she's being like encircled by these cobras, you know, preventing him from having any possibility. I'm glad you illuminated that. This is another album I went through <clears throat> listening to the lyrics on all the songs. I could not make sense of oh, no, any of them. <laughs> I mean, that's that's an interpretation. It doesn't mean it's the right one. because uh, it sounds it, good. He, it's better than um, I could come up with. <laughs> yeah, looking closely at all the lyrics, not just Behar's, but Carl Newman's, it's it's very much it falls into the Rick Ocasek kind of thing where it's really mm-hmm. wide open. And sometimes it sounds like just words thrown out there. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and and that was that was one of the things I always 
thought about the cars mm-hmm. and um and, and that's definitely true here too i mean you, you you can read so much into them and there are very few songs where it's very it, it's really clear what he's actually getting at maybe on some of their but other that, albums but not this one <laughs> yeah yeah and it 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 doesn't i mean some of them are kind of get the gist of the song and i mean even the ones nico sings aren't and you can maybe understand the lyrics a little more clearly but doesn't mean you understand what the song is about any better but well there's so many metaphors in there jackie <clears throat> Grissom and cobus for instance mm-hmm. yeah right there's all sorts of weird things the references the stuff that uh might have been relevant when this was written, but uh, make no mm-hmm. sense now. <laughs> I don't. Th- I, yeah, I don't think it's so much. I mean, that was, this album is not so old. It's only fifteen years old. Yeah, I don't think it sounds dated. No, Sarah, what did you? Uh, I mean, I assume there must have been a few things you did like on the album. Uh, I think I, it's a weird thing for me. Like liking music and disliking music have very similar patterns. Where like, if you really like music and you listen to it, for me anyway, like the whole time I'm like feeling like yes, I am really like re-emphasizes why I like this because of a thing I'll hear or a thing I'll notice or a thing I'll be into. This record, like, I didn't like it the first time I listened to it. And then I, I kept listening to it, like, a bunch of times. Mm. And I would kind of be okay with, like, a song or a bit of it. And then again, I would just end up being like, no, this doesn't work for me. Like, the, I think the the nonsensical lyrics are so nonsensical that they're, like, towards Guided by Voices, which is, like, the furthest end to me. But you love Guided by Voices. I do, because they go far <laughs> enough. Like, I feel like these lyrics are, like, it comes off to me as disingenuous, and, mm. like, they're just trying too hard to sound. Like, someone has a thesaurus, and it's like, now I'm going to throw the word Contessa into this song for, like, no reason that's helping anything. It's just like a jar to me every time I hear him use the word in that song. Yeah, well, like, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. He has another and song called like Contessa weird... also. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things so I don't like. But... Self-referential. See, you keep mm. saying things you don't like about Behar songs, and, mm-hmm. and that's I don't either. I, like I said, I, I'm not a big fan of his stuff. I, I wish he wasn't there. In fact, he won't be there because mm-hmm. he's left the group. Uh, he won't be there when we see them. But every every album, I find that like his songs take me out of the the flow of the the album Mm. so Mm. and and but as i said on this album i can find more to enjoy about his songs than i usually do also for me it's like the most of these songs are very like to me the shape of them is just very like smooth Mm. there's not like enough of a variance like it's over instrument over instrumented to Mm. me to my taste Mm. there's a couple that get close i really like use it and i really like um three or four those songs are are really fun yeah, use it's um, a great song. Yeah, they're a little harder. They're to me they're a little it's like the difference between like if you write out a word in all capital letters and then that word takes the shape of a rectangle, or if you write out a word in a combination of upper and lowercase, then the word has a shape to it. To me their their songs are just all caps. <laughs> and I just don't get any any nuance, any valleys, any dips, any like highs. To me it's all just like and they're clearly talented musicians and they're mm-hmm. good songwriters. And the mix is, the, it's well produced. Yeah. Like there's nothing really that I can point to to be like, this is why they, they're a good band. It just doesn't appeal to me. It's not something mm. I would ever reach for to mm. listen to on my own. And I don't feel inspired by it. And I don't mm. feel moved by it. And I don't feel like, it's like the kind of music that I could never dance to. That I feel like is designed for me to just sit in a chair and just kind of be like, like bop my hat along a little bit. But it doesn't make me want to get up and do anything. I don't know. I think it's great music to do stuff while you're listening to I mean not in the background while you're uh, cooking yeah yeah I, I love listening to them when I'm like cooking or something mm-hmm. and and I don't know I, I don't I don't get that from them at all I mean I, I I'm definitely moved by some of their stuff I find it very uh the music is inspiring I think the energy is fantastic it seems a little funny that you liked the cars so much with okay six lyrics being the way they are but you have problems with it in yeah in in this context it's, well, it's funny. too many words there's too many words. Like his words he, are weird, he a, but he uses them more sparsely. I, I don't think he can help so it. So you can have some space to like, oh, is, what does this mean? And this is, you're just like, uh, uh, cobras, contessa, what's, <laughs> stop. Just give me a fucking second to like hold on to something before you're like throwing more stuff yeah, at me yeah, again. Yeah. Well, I, I have more no, guitars. I have no interest in hearing, or very little interest in hearing Destroyer albums, which is Dan Behar's main band project, because I, I yeah, his stuff, uh, irks me from time to time and but carl newman stuff i i i don't mind that he's using fancy words or however you put it but listening to him talk in interviews he's just 
a super literate, smart guy, and he just, I don't think he can help himself. That's just the way he expresses himself. I think he's mm. just, he's not trying to be anything that he's not. He's just, he just, he's very well read. And he just he uses all these references in his head and just, you know, puts it out there. Mm. Well, but, after, after looking at the words to these songs on here, realizing they were nonsensical, I, I chose, you know, just to listen to the music with a voice as another instrument in there, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. You know, like trains devouring their land. You know, that's, there's some imagery right there, but for mm. the most which I kind of like that one. Yeah. yeah, I think that's it's, great. It's um, you know, just another sound that participates in the music. And yeah, it, yeah. I mean, and that's that's tends to be what I do with mm-hmm. songs, and groups that I where the music, the lyrics, I can't find the meaning of them exactly. I but if I like the way it all sounds together enough, then that's that's cool. You know, I don't care. Well, let's let's play use it because it was one you mentioned, mm-hmm. especially liking. I think that's a great one. I, it's interesting you picked that one up because I um, uh, one of the things I thought about while listening to it again was that it reminds me a bit of a spoon song, which yes, you are a big which fan. Is why of. I like it, yeah, because it sounds like another band that I really <clears throat> like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I also I uh, noted one line that I liked a lot: uh, two sips from the cup of human kindness, mm-hmm. and I'm shit faced." No, oh, I hate uh, that line. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> I do. Why? I wrote down, "I hate that." Li- I have, I have. Uh, <laughs> Heads down, thumbs up. I like that line. I think that's fun and and like yeah. quick and like well expressed. And then that cup of human kindness, and I'm wasted. Oh, it's just like I, I, it just sounds so pretentious. Uh, Sorry, Dave. <laughs> this is not about you. Uh, I know. Okay. Well, there's a funny video with this uh, the song. Oh, is this the one where they're dancing? The uh, they go on the uh, uh, you know I they, know they have some call. really entertaining videos actually. Yeah. I, I checked them out. Yeah, this could totally be a spoon song. Yeah. The drums, the rhythm, the piano. The piano. Yeah. 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 There's so many of these choruses in their songs that, especially when Nico joins in too, like, and they're just soaring and they're just like, I, I find them very uplifting. They're just like they, they, some of them send chills down my, my spine. I, uh, I feel that way about the, the Bleeding Heart show. That, that yeah, that. you know, funny. Thing, a lot of people, I, I've seen that a lot of people uh, refer to that as their favorite song by them. Period. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I like it a lot, it but it's not my favorite song on the album. And yeah. I, 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 um, but that is a, yeah, that's a really cool song. Well, and, you know, the buildup of it, it starts out with just a few instruments and then it picks right. up a few more. And, and it's like, you know, a stairway to heaven where it just it comes throws to the Hala. a bunch more and boy, it like kicks off and yeah. it's badass. A little reference to the, the Beatles, Hello Goodbye too, because they, yeah. they come back at the end of that song and do Hey La, Hey La, Hello. But, mm-hmm. and here they're saying Hey La again, again, but. Um, let's play a little bit of that one too. I think Nico's uh, vocal touches in this are really excellent too. The drums in this song are pretty outstanding. Yeah, well. the drumming on their their throughout this album is fantastic. I there's yeah. a few songs where I just I made note of that in particular, and I never really thought so much about. That that aspect of them before. Well, one of the things I really appreciate about all their songs was, it, it seems like it was specifically chosen where a particular instrument would, would would come in, like the drums or the or that song a second ago, use it, where the piano jumped in there, but then there was a pause and then it came in again. It's not like something that had to be there the entire. It's time. not overused necessarily. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it that... very uh, very lightly used yeah. in many in many circles. Well, I think they're good. Arrangers. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure who's mostly. I mean, I would sort of assume Carl Newman's mostly yeah. the arranger for these, but. But yeah, to, to say they're not overused, yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. I do like that part a lot. Heroic. 
I'm not super fond of this, the harmonium, that little Mm-mm. high-pitched thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, that's not a favorite part of mine in the song. And, The two primary Nico case numbers are among my favorites on the album. I mean, they're just, I think they're amazing songs. Uh, the Bones of an Idol, I just, mm-hmm. when I hear that, I just can't get out of my head after because it's just such a fantastic melody. And I think that the arrangement, the, the, just the, the sonic uh, space that it is in, just really cool. These songs that Nico sings, Sarah, would they stand out for you? Or are they preferred? Uh, this one I'm not a fan of because I feel like there's a weird tune going on here. Like, every time you think her voice is about to go to a place, it doesn't. It goes to a different place. And oh. I find it very jarring. Huh. Oh. And it doesn't sound... It doesn't sound... There's not a flow to it. It's like... She's like... Ma, 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 I, ma, and it, it just... I it couldn't disagree with you more on that. This is just, feel. that's one of the things I love about it. It's just, the melody is so, it reminds me of old English folk songs or something. There's a, a pattern to the melodies of those. Um, it's not like a direct lift from those, but it's something, something very, um, very English about it <laughs> to me. And I love the slide guitar that comes in right here. That right there, it, that that really it lifts the hairs of my neck whenever I hear it. I, I, literally, I mean, I, I I just it, it's so I find it so oh yeah. Look, see, <laughs> uh, no, there's something about this that's so epic sounding to me, and it just it 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 just I can't hear this song without getting a little choked up. Really, I, it's 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 something about it. So so. Uh, and I'm talking about the lyrics. I'm just talking about the the way it sounds and her voice and everything. It's just. Do you need tissue? It's, it's, I, I think I do. <laughs> it's a it's a potent. I don't know. There's just something about it. That, that, and then and then as it, you know, it, it's actually a fairly short song. It it, it kind of comes in and gets out while it's still getting still good. You know, it doesn't like overstay its welcome. Yeah, I love that. So. Well, the other Nico case was these. These are, are the, the fables. fables yeah. That's a fantastic. Which yeah. starts out just like a guided by voices song on "Do the Collapse" called "Hold on Hope," except when he starts singing, it's like this really nice melody that like you immediately want to sing onto along with. And this is another one that I thought that it has a weird like measure or flow to it that doesn't sound. Hmm. Let's, let's take a little listen. Yeah. I mean, already it sounds like. There's just something about the songs that she's singing here that is so like epic feeling. I don't know if that's the right word, but that's the way it feels to me. It's just That right there seems so inconsistent with the rest of it. They're so precise, but when they have the backup vocals on that My Street right there, they're, the timing is, you know, minusculely off, but it's, mm. it's not as precise as almost every damn thing else on this album. I think it's intentional, though. I mean, I, I, I suspect so. I, yeah. It's just to it strikes me throw off. you off slightly. Just I wonder if they tried a different timing and maybe it just felt too... It, it just... It just Gave a little more interest. Well, you able to uh, discern that there is, in fact, other voices there. For us. Yeah. Maybe this. Maybe yeah. It. Oh, and then the um, the drums at the end of the song are are really fantastic. Yeah. And, and actually, I think I'm not sure it's this song or the. Um, or maybe it's Bleeding Hearts show where the, the, there's this extended thing where he's just like doing some fantastic stuff on the drums. And I never really noticed it until listening more closely 
for this. Yeah, and yeah, because the drums are like, they're kind of in the mix. They're not yeah. quite. Yeah, if you don't listen closely, they don't stand out. But when you do, it's they really. I'm gonna jump ahead here. Let me just. Uh... You should just play the beginning of that. Got to my voices song. You can hear how I'm, like it's I, I so think, much. I think like I think I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Actually, I am. Yeah. This is the end of that same one. No, I think it's I think it's the end of. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go back to the Bleeding Heart Chef. We, if you don't mind, for a second, I'm gonna jump to the end, the Halo part. Yeah. 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 I found myself air drumming to this. Yeah. Like, frantically. Oh yeah. <laughs> and he does these fantastic rolls and. Uh, I didn't even double check to see who the drummer is. I, I have to admit, I am not. I don't remember all the names of the other people besides like the the main. Oh, here he's doing some really cool. Yeah, he gets yeah, he's badass. Yeah, this is awesome. So Eric, did you? Uh, what else did stood out for you? <laughs> <laughs> They're just all so good. You didn't know. You know, be, be, because I couldn't really get into the words of them. I mm-hmm. kind of listened mm-hmm. to them for the uh, the sound. Yeah, and um, the, the pretty consistently the the uh, the precision of their their musicianship stuck out to me. Um, I really identified it with uh, the Bleeding Heart show, uh, Jackie, Justin, Cobras, and, and use it. Those were those were my three favorites. Bleeding mm-hmm. Heart should be in the top of that. There, there was a I have falling through your clothes. That was interesting. Like that, I was trying to sort of figure out what that might mean. Yeah, and yeah, trying to get some imagery there. Yeah, and I, 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 what I came up with is it either means. Referencing that, yeah, well, I think the line goes something like, uh, "You're only she's only comfortable when she's falling through her clothes or falling through whatever, uh, however it's worded." But like, I, it either means I think like getting undressed mm-hmm. to have a romantic encounter with someone, uh, or um, yeah, well, I think I think actually that's what I it, it I think that's what I came down to. But oh, it kind of amused me because it has a bit of and, an ABBA sound to it. Oh yeah. That's, that's interesting. I hadn't put, thought of that. What I was going to say was the, uh, I think the song, yeah, I think what it, it's about is uh, how this person, sex validates her. She only feels at ease when she's having sex. And, I don't know, well, let's let's listen to a little bit of that one. This one starts out sounding like um, Neutral Milk Hotel. Um, are you familiar with them, Sarah? I know who they are. I've yeah. never listened yeah. to them. Yeah. part that sounds abba like right, to you. Right. yeah yeah i can sort of see that i guess yeah and also i, I mark this as my my least favorite uh, mm. song of the song just the repetitive nature of this well i'm not things. crazy about the way they sing yeah. that part and it's like it's kind of cut off i think it's like yeah edited to be repeated like that or something it's, I, I'm not, it's like a little too abrupt right there that piece is yeah yeah i'm not i mean it's not one of my favorites on the album but and then there's a uh, one of another one of their 
uh, fan favorites is uh, Sing Me Spanish Techno, mm -hmm. which apparently came from, uh, it was from a true true thing, like his, his girlfriend at the time, only the only Spanish she knew was from, well, she lived in Spain at some point for a while, and the only sp Spanish she had picked up was from techno songs that she heard on the dance floor at the, the dance club or something <laughs> like that. Anyway, I think it's my, possibly my favorite vocal of his on the album. I think it's his strongest song, strongest performance overall. Yeah, I think it's a cool song. I just uh, I don't like the title of it. <laughs> <laughs> this, sing, this like Sing Me Spanish you, Techno is the name of the song. It just sounds like a kid that went on <coughs> like cultural exchange to Spain and then comes back and is like, oh, when I was in Barcelona, this is all the things that I saw and just talks about Spain nonstop at the drop of a hat. Well, it's, that's a little bit of what it's about. <laughs> it's not him being that way. But... No, it's just, yeah. you know, yeah. like yeah. I looked at the name of the song and I was like, what? <laughs> Come on! See, I, no, I, I, it just—it just feels so like excessive. Like if you could just take everything down, like a notch or two, this could be an amazing album. Time. But it's just like it feels like every single aspect has just been overthought and mm. overdone and over. Let's add one more guitar in. I don't know. It's just like it's just—it's too much. There's no, there's no like ebb and flow of it for me. It just. Yeah. It's all the same color. Fair enough. I, I find there to be more ebb and flow, I think. Uh, and and I think it comes through, for me, and it comes through in the different personalities in the band. And uh, like I find each song sung by somebody else, like a change in pace, kind of. And, uh, well, I think I'm with Sarah on that one right there. They, 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 they all have characteristics all these songs have the similar characteristics and, and the things that I like about them, I mean, the precision and the and the vocals um, but they I, I can get halfway through the album and be, and be satisfied that I've had my fix you know or maybe listen to the other half another time or something like that but they, they, they do all sound somewhat similar in, in that respect well, they have a certain energy level. I, I would agree with that. I mean, there's a, a an aggressiveness to their uh, to their propulsion of the song, or whatever. And I, I think it's actually uh, their first album. Uh, as much as I love it, I think sometimes it I, I think it does suffer a little more, or I, I sometimes get a little weary from some of what you're saying. I think I think that's can be. Uh, can be overdone. I don't think it is on this album. Though. Just, to me, this is a, a more moderate. Like you know, this, this right here, this point, this part right here, it brings it down to a, a somewhat more quiet, not quiet, you know, but because that guitar even, dropped out and it's even. more open, and then the guitar comes crashing back in there with the yeah, cymbals. Using whatever that percussive thing is, where you hold it like this. The maraca. <laughs> Which is just the same sound. They seem to have stopped right now. Well, yeah. <laughs> right when she said that, right? Now. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite times to listen to this album was when I was commuting, just in yeah. my car, and yeah. you know, I had to pay attention to what was going on around me. But it was it was good background stuff. Yeah. No. I, you know, I, unlike uh, Tom Waite, you know, I had to focus on that. But this one right here, I really like the vocals on the <clears throat> three, three or four, three or four. Mm -hmm. Sarah, I do too. Them, I yeah. really like that song. I like that song, and I love his vocals on that song. Yeah, let's listen to it. I don't know for inter interpretation, but I gave up. Days, days <laughs> and this is where where they get a little new wavy sort of too. This is kind of like Gary Newman with Cars or something. And it's like, definitely has that uh, mechanical 
new wave kind of groove to it. Um, one of my favorite songs of the many that I like on here is Star Bodies, the next one. And this one has this incredible, it's what I mentioned before, I had these soaring choruses. Mm-hmm. This one I think is just... <laughs> Sorry. This one I think is is really just like maybe maybe the best uh, of the bunch as far as, not, not the song in its entirety necessarily, but um, yeah, I'm going to... I'm gonna play it. I'll show you what I mean. It's got some good Nico vocals and great drumming too. This mm-hmm. one is another one. The drumming really stood out for me. right here starting here I just love this kind of like their voices together here are just fantastic this one didn't really uh, capture me no yeah. I just thought that chorus just but the rest of it is not like so doesn't stand out so much but I just I love that chorus A song that really stuck out for me, and uh, I loved "Blast It" when it came on with the Jessica numbers. Oh yeah, that's yeah, a, that that's, that's a great. A, that's a good song to play loud. Yeah, this is a. They really use the acoustic guitar in this really well, I thought, um, and it, I think it also builds too. It's another one of those it's songs I found very epic. Mm-hmm. Um, it acts as a great lead into fables. These are the fables. Not crazy about this intro. I kind of like it. <laughs> it's talking about precision. It's it's definitely yeah. a good bit. And like Nico's voice, I like you can hear it so clearly in there. Like she has such a this, this character to her vocal to like this acoustic there. Uh, it's mixed pretty equally with the other voices, but somehow she just comes through so clearly. I think there's there's something about the way about her voice that's just so unique. Maybe they should make her Strong. sing all the songs on here. Early. Yeah, it's not you her know, band, Eric. That had never occurred to me. It's not her band. <laughs> I'm going to skip ahead to the end because I think I want to remember what it sounded like at the end. Oh, yeah, that just keeps adding this. Yeah, these, these that, that guitar there, it reminds me of the Beatles' uh, Hey Bulldog. There's this, there's this guitar solo that has a very similar tone to it and, like, mm-hmm. just sort of piercing... Here's just through the mix. Yeah, they just haven't got like a Beatles pop vibe to their music. Hmm. So, so Davey, was there a, uh, well, I guess well, the, the hits or misses is what I was yes. working towards. Well, hmm. I would like to do that too, but I, I, yeah. I, I want to talk about one more song. One more All song. right. Hmm. Wait a <laughs> the uh, Stacked Crooked, the last song on the album. I really like, there's a uh, phrase, my private Altamont, referring to the Rolling Stones the, the concert where the Hells Angels killed somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm you know, familiar with that's, this. That's the uh, Altamont concert. Right. So he refers to his, my, his private Altamont, which I think is just such a kind of cool way to describe your own... Pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> insightful. I is it? Yeah. Um, and then the, the chorus on this, the, the, I don't know if it's exactly a chorus, but there's a, it's very Who-like uh, from the Who's mid-60s uh, or late-60s period on their album Sell Out, The Who Sell Out, and also on Tommy, too. There's this kind of thing that comes up in a lot of their songs with acoustic guitar and, and this kind of like epic melody. Uh, it's on songs like I Can't Reach You and uh, also an Amazing Journey from Tommy. And there's something about this song that just really 
ties into those songs or just This song, it just, it feels like a, a mini rock opera, like The Who also, where it's like got all these different parts to it that are all very different, but they kind of fit together in an interesting way. Pete Townsend would do this kind of thing a lot. Like he um, would frequently had these quick changes in, in pacing or instrumentation. And this right here, this is the part that's so Who-like. Mm-hmm. Like that guitar that's drumming, it sounds just like a, a song Real on the Who Sell Out. I love that section. It's just uh, it's very haunting about that. But in fact, I'd like to, if you guys will, will uh, be patient here, I'm going to find that Who song. You know, listening to that song now, I, I like it more than a have listened mm-hmm. to it in the past for some reason. Perhaps just hearing your commentary. Well, it's, yeah, it definitely, um, I think it's one of the more interesting songs of the album. I, I, I just, very, very varied kind of thing. But, um, well, as you, as you stated, it was, it's one of the later songs in the album. So perhaps I was, by the time I got to it, I yeah, didn't have well, <laughs> the wherewithal to that, appreciate that it as much that as That can, can happen. Been. Yeah. So let's see, I, I even noted where in Rail. This, okay, it's at three minutes and 40 seconds into the song. <laughs> We're going to hear... So this is from the Who Sell Out. But, um, okay, right... Right about here. Here, come in. That's drumming in, in the kind of the echoey, the kind of the very singing stack crooked on and on. Now I'm on my way. So there's that, and then there's also I'm just gonna do this and go right for it here. Amazing journey at well, 15 seconds in, so I can just let it. Right here for a second. Overall, this song it sounds a little more like the Stacked Crooked song on its entirety. But... Like, like Daltrey singing here, combined with the music, has that same feel for me as that Stacked Crooked chorus. So like this, yeah. I mean, I, I think Carl Newman is very influenced by mid-period who yeah, but in general I think too not just that song necessarily but anyway you should do the uh, our hits or misses mm-hmm. um, and since I picked this album I'll do the miss which I maybe not surprisingly given what I was saying earlier it's a, it's a Carl Behar song uh, Streets of Fire because his favorite songs tend to be my least favorite and this is my least favorite of his songs on this album it automatically falls into the least favorite mm-hmm. on the album song uh, it does have nice guitar, but um, just doesn't do much for me. I found it a weak spot. And again, I sometimes find myself wishing they would leave his stuff off the album. There's a hint of Harry Chapin in that, uh, in that, in that song. song. Yeah. yeah, actually. Yeah, it's I, it's I like spoken words or something like that. Yeah. I, I, I just His vocals tend to annoy me more, <laughs> more often than not. So anyway, um, so that leaves you guys, Sarah, you included... To pick a favorite, do you have a favorite on there? Um, I like I said, three or four, or use it. I Is really that, like yeah. both of those songs a lot. Yeah, I think yeah, they're really fun. Strong points. Yeah, 
Eric, do you uh, I like narrow to it down? use a lot also, but um, I think the you know, <clears throat> show was uh, yeah was the top of my list. I, I just get lost in the song, you know, the, the way it like, mm-hmm. slowly begins and, and uh, adds instruments. Yeah, I think it's really well done, and and, the, and songs like that appeal to me anyway. That uh, build up and then bash and crash in the end. It's really really yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, well, it, like I said, it's uh, it, there was some poll that. I, I don't know. I think maybe like the Facebook page for the new pornographers, and I, and I don't think they're responsible for it, but I think they did some sort of poll to see what people's favorite uh, song was by them, and it ended up being that mm-hmm. one, which really surprised me because it never. I mean, I like it, but it it it. There are so many other songs by them that I think I like even more. That it just surprised me that that was such a mm-hmm. popular one. But well, that's about it. That's about all I have to say for the cool. thing. So thanks for listening. <laughs>